Organized Sound Podcast. Welcome back. My name is Hibbal Day. I'm joined today by a very special guest. Temple is in the building. What's up, guys? How you doing? So that's T X M P L E. How you been doing? I've been I've been really good. I've been like this year has been very productive for me in general in every way. That's awesome. Actually, I I like productivity. That's one of my like hobbies in terms of reading and stuff like that. How do you have like a productive year? What do you do to be productive just like in a regular day? I mean, I have a specific routine that I do every day. I wake up, you know, do what I got to do, brush my teeth. And then the first thing I do is I try to write one song a day, whether it be not like I don't even have to complete it. I just want to write something down, an idea, a dream, you know, something that I could build off of in the future. Like I try to get every day that I live and do something, whether it be with singing, recording, something productive. It doesn't even have to be career wise. Maybe help a friend. Like I'm just a productive person in general. That's awesome. I think starting the day, early start to the day, and like physically doing something is important. So do, do you write it on paper or do you like write it in your phone notes or like on your laptop? I've you know I write all my um songs and stuff on my notes, but I'm I think I'm going to start writing them on paper because I'm I lost like two albums worth of songs, really really good songs and I'm never going to be able to get back because I lost my phone. So I lost all the notes, all the ideas. I was so mad. Like I had like I had to drop two albums because I couldn't get that notes back. So it was like a big loss, but like it made me realize like I got to do more. Got to yeah, be smarter. Know, yeah. Right. It's you learn lessons out. You know, here. you take you losses, you, you take learn. losses, but you know, you're going to be better in the end. Big time. So uh, introduce yourself to the people. Tell them uh, what you do. My name is John. I would I would like to say that I'm a jack of all trades. I, I do singing. Right. I'm very entrepreneurial. I, um, rec- I, um, direct, produce, I do literally everything. If it has to do with a camera, I do it. I act, I film, edit, graphic design, everything. That's awesome. Um, so I want to talk about how you started with music specifically because uh, that's how I kind of first got to know you as an artist is through your music. Well, okay, I'm going to tell you how I started getting into music, like the real genuine story. So I was in fifth grade, and I was always on the we, I, on the bus. You would always play around. You know, you'd be on the bus. It'd be kids. I would always be in the back, and I was like, and I was like the bad kid. And I was like always a rebel, so in the back of the school bus, I was always just like hanging out and stuff. And one one time, this this kid, I don't I, don't, I don't remember his name is Abdi. He's like, oh, he was listening to rap music, and I was like, what's that? Uh, blah, what is that? It's cool. I want to try. He's like, he put. So a, do you know? Do you remember what song it was? No, I, I think it was like Chief Keef or something. Okay. Like, the, uh, love so so. Yes. So he put the <laughs> beat to Chief that. Keef. I put the beat to that. He put the beat to it. He's like, oh, you know, go spit a quick 16. I'm like, what's a 16? But whatever. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm rapping. Yeah, it's the start. I'm like, oh, la, la. I was so trash. I'm not going to, you know. But they, I think it's a drive that they saw in me that caused them to push me to keep pursuing it because it was like, I was really trying. And even though it was tra- trash and stuff, it was like they saw like, oh, he really wants to do it. They're like, oh, you should do this. And I remember I was like, I'm going to be famous one day. Oh, la. Like, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I think highly of myself, not because I'm cocky, but because, like, I just feel like I have unlimited potential. I feel like when you when you tell yourself, like, to tone it down, I feel like you're limiting your potential. So I always tell myself, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know? Like, it's just, like, something that I've always done. But music, like, it started off as, like, a joke, more of, like, you know, kind of like a gag thing I used to do. I would write, like, songs and stuff. And then eventually my love for it started to really grow. I started to connect to it and like six seventh writing music i recorded purple fantasies when i was like 14 and during that time i was going through so much with my family and some personal stuff just like stuff like that you know i just wanted to like i know that you can have a big voice with music you know lil pump he dude is blowing up the dude pulls out tens of thousands of people but can you imagine being able to promote a positive message to your audience like that much people how much the world right, would be powerful. informed 
but you know people people like him it's unfortunate people like him they they promote the wrong thing so the world continues being continues to be ignorant what i want to do what i want to do differently is like i want to you know i want to be a badass but i want to be like you know, I want to be informed. You know, there's there's a there's a difference. You could be a badass or a dumbass. You know, like you, people get it confused. People think that you have to do drugs to be cool. People think that you you know have to have a lot of girls to be accepted and stuff like that. You have to act a type of way, dress a type of way, and it's really not like that. Like you know, look at me. People like me. They don't think I do music. They don't think I do half of the things I do, but I do do it. And when I still show them my music, they still like it because it's not it's not about the physical. It's like you know, don't judge a book by its cover. To be honest, like, I'm very versatile, and, like, you know, it's just, you, you know, you just got to follow your dreams. Right, and, and be yourself within that. Um, you just touched on, like, a whole bunch of things that I agree with. Um, wow, that was really dense. Okay, so we talked about you starting to record. I guess I want to talk about where you are now. How do you record? Where do you go? And um, then I want to talk about your voice a little bit. All right. You know something crazy is that when I first started rapping, the first couple of years, I didn't record. I've just, the first time I ever, ever touched a mic, like recorded, is when I recorded this song. It's called um, Lethal. I was like 13. And it was so, it was like, the, like there's, the lyrics are okay. But like, I don't know, I was just like, I was so young. My voice was like, eh, nye, nye, nye. yeah. Like, there's like a bar on there where I'm like, um, duh, duh, girls, they be feeling it for me. Something like that. But it was hard. But that was the first time I ever hit the booth. And I actually hit it for free. Funny story behind that is I had like 200 bucks on me that day. And I was like, I have 200 bucks. I could finally hit the studio. Whoa. Blah, blah. So I'm yeah. mad excited, whatever, whatever. And I was with friends. You know, I. I used to hang out the, around the wrong crowd when I was younger, which was dumb. But, you know, I was young. Gotcha. What did I know? You didn't know better. But I was hanging around them. And it was like, oh, I got a studio, bro. Blah, blah, blah. One of the kids like, my dad records. So he's like, give me the money. I'm like, cool, here. Take the money. Bring me to him. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm like, imagine I'm going to the studio. We go all the way to downtown just for him to be like, wait here. I'll be back. So I'm waiting. He goes 10 minutes, 20, 30. I'm like, damn. Just man, go. So I look everywhere. I ended up going in the studio and be like, "Yo, so did your son come?" And he's like, "Son, I don't have a son." I'm like, "But your son just told me." <laughs> he, uh, this is like, I'm like, "Oh my god, this dude just stole two hundred bucks from me." Just putting it together. So, so I told a guy, I'm like, I told him everything that happened. Say, like, "How are you gonna let a guy take your money?" I'm like, "Cause he's your son." Like, how did I know? <laughs> I was like, no, I don't even got a son. I got three daughters. I'm like, I was like, yo, can you just please? I had to back, like, oh, can you give me the session? I came here from far. I'm real, like, I really want to. He's like, oh, I got you. He gave me a free session. He ended up mixing me, and um, you know, came from there. I met him. He was dope, and we just started recording from there. Wow. Wait. So then you continued to go to the same studio? Yeah, because it's like. He, he, he gave me he didn't have to give me that free session it, right you really appreciated that yeah I really said, appreciated okay, the authenticity a, in that so like this is a good business man and from from the get me and him have always had like a, a connect like his his views I agree with his views and he agrees with mine so we've just always been a good duo when it comes to working okay so you're still going there to this day yes I haven't been there recently I've been recording with Edo but um I will start going back there eventually because I do enjoy recording with him Word. And shout out Eddie Saturn holding it down shout right now. Shout out Edo. Um, all right. So I also want to get into the songs. You talk about your, your voice developing. And I think right now your style, you were saying you were getting like a boogie comparisons and stuff like that. And I definitely agree with that melodically. But in terms of just this tone that you have, it's, it's so your own. And I think that's what Thank makes you. your music like so powerful and so different um wh what do you do in the studio to like play with your voice or how how has that vocally developed for you my producer his name's tommy pockets mm -hmm. he he told me the same thing he told me like oh your voice i was like what do you mean and he was like because i'm very picky about wh who i record with i'm because i'm like i know i'm an annoying person i'm gonna be like fix this fix that cut this out pause this Cause I want I want to be able to put out the best work that I can, right? So like, 
And I do I understand what you mean too when you say I sound like a boogie. A lot of people say I sound like a boogie. Some have said that I sounded like a uh, what's his name, Lil TJ. Mm-hmm. People say I sound like him. Like I don't know. I've noticed that my style is very similar to them because I I gain inspiration from them. I like listening to both of them. Some of my flows are inspired by theirs. But the thing that I I feel like I do different is the way that I tone my voice. I feel like they sing like very like hmm. I sing like that, but I also add like a like a um very stern tone. So I'll be like, you said you love me, but you don't. You don't lie to me. I'm singing, but I'm stern about it. So I'm like blunt. I don't know. Right. Like, you you've got like a sharp transition on words, and it's not as like wavy. Yeah, it's like a sharp melody. Because it's like, I don't want to sound the same. You know, it's easy to sound the same. Yes. It's very hard to stand out. So what I would like, I want to stand out. And it's really, you know, the music industry is so oversaturated with the same thing. People, you know, people need to start implementing new styles into the music. Like, you know, like uh, YBN Corday, he's doing the old school thing. He's bringing that back. Um you know, do you have people? Yeah, but he, he strikes a really delicate balance of bringing back old school but still sounding modern. And I haven't really he brings, seen anyone do that well since, like, Rocky. Oh, he brings, like, an old school. He had he adapts from both faces. If you listen to his um, 1985 five response, he's talking, you know, about the rap game from both sides. And I feel like he gets, you know, he implements old rap, like the things they studied and he implements stuff with that new people study and you know he makes his own style but like it's like people like joiner lucas for example sure. the dude's dope everybody likes him he's fast he's he has talent he has potential he promotes the right things he's humble he's from we, massachusetts yes we need more people we need more people from the field we need more people in general to just promote the right thing now you know i'm not gonna knock Lil pump or anybody like that you know they they have their own hustle they do the things their own way you know, but we need to empower, you know, I feel like when you, when, when people like Lil Pump and stuff like that, they enslave people with thinking with that same mindset. Oh, you know, for me to be cool, I have to have like Gucci. For me to be cool, I have to have money. I have to sell drugs. That's not how it should be because I feel like the, when, in our generation, the internet and music especially is a big thing. What you put in your music can affect one person. It can affect millions of people why would you tell people to be like oh i got a gun i'm going to shoot you if you you know like stuff like that you know uh, you know like it's just promoting the wrong messages this is why there's a lot of gun crimes this is why there's a lot of like negativity within our youth because we're so ignorant we're taught to be ignorant we're raised to be ignorant there's no structure being taught you know what i mean and it, it doesn't help when it when it's happening every day what we listen to always like i mean at least like what, like, what you listen, what people listen to now, the popular stuff. Most of it is really like it's street stuff, you know. I don't know, like it's just yeah, it's a very delicate thing. To, yeah. Um. And yeah, I think sl- things are slowly gonna change because everyone who does it right now, you know, rap as a whole is very young, and everyone who does it right now is very young, and they always say it's a young man's sport. Although I would argue young men aren't the people making the most money from it, mm-hmm. um, but I, I think things are changing. I there's a very recent Meek Mill post where he's like, "Let's stop, you know, glorifying buying new cars, foreign cars, and jewelry, and let's all start being like business owners of multiple businesses and elevate communities and create generational wealth." And he kind of exists in that place where he came in very young did all the things that he thought he was supposed to do and now somebody who's consistent enough to be on the other side of it be a little older be a little wiser and say okay this is the new way everybody you know jay-z meek mill all the old heads they all came from where we're coming from now poverty they came from times where they had to sell drugs. You know, it was their only thing to do. They couldn't get jobs because their records are probably not clean. You know, I'm not saying that people who talk like, you know, people that are saying like, people that tell their stories is different than people promoting drugs. For sure. You know, you got people like, people like Meek Mill, he, you know, he sold drugs to get where he's at. I mean, not that's dumb. Like, he sold 
drugs, he started off, accumulated some money, flipped that, you know. That's hustle. But when you're on a studio being like, I just pop Molly, da 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 you know, like, that's just, that's, that's just bull. Why promote that, you know? Exactly. I, I mean, would I, I don't know, like, I, I want to, I want to talk more about your music. Um, so we've got Purple Fantasy, you just mentioned that song. Purple Fantasy, yes. Definitely, what, what, um, inspired that song? So would would that be one of your earlier songs? That you song is my. You said you're 14, right? Yeah, that song was my third song ever recorded. No, f- uh, yeah, third song ever recorded ever. In and a so how did how did that song come together? Um, I was really depressed. Not to sound like cliche or anything, but like I was in a point in my life where I felt like I wasn't really going nowhere. Because I never went to school. I didn't really have much luck with jobs. I had, my mom wasn't really present in my life. So I was like, my life was pretty crap. So I was like, what the hell can I do that you don't need experience for? Like something that I'm good at doing. Like I was just thinking about things and photography, stuff like that came about. But rapping was just like an outlet. Cause I've been having purple fantasies I dream me with a happy love Got no family oh, family I was girl. the girl of my dreams of my dreams We were living in the hills wearing 14 k jewelry Yeah Yeah Johnny Johnny yeah. Johnny Hum and side up on a track I'm yeah. on the track girl Johnny Yeah Yeah Cause I've been having purple fantasies It's rap, when you hear my music, like I had over 30 songs recorded, 30, 40, 50 songs on my SoundCloud and stuff like that. And they were popping. They had hundreds of views or whatever. I took them all off because they were like, when I first started getting into music, I went through like that whole like rebellious, I think I'm just shit because I'm a rapper phase. And I was just pushing music that really I didn't want people to know me for. Mm -hmm. So I took those down and I put Purple Fantasies up. Which was um, the fourth song I recorded. That that song got me popping through Springfield. That song got six thousand plays, and everybody around my I'm like neighborhood famous. Like everybody around my neighborhood is just like, yo Johnny, yeah. Because in the song, the beginning of the song, I'm like Johnny, yeah. So everybody just <laughs> yeah, screams that at me. Like, but no, that song came together like I was on my bed and I was just thinking about relationships thinking about my past right. things i've struggled these, with these are always present in almost all of your songs that you have out now and i i think this like element of like young love young relationships i think that's where you're really strong at making a song that's like fun and simple enough but still involved enough in telling your story there, a lot of people i feel like we're all young and we're all ignorant and when it comes to love, a lot of people are uninformed. Social media, you know, makes relationships seem so perfect, so clear as day. You know, the way that people perceive social, I mean, uh, relationships is very um, counterfeit. When you're in a relationship, you, you're in a bond, you're in a connection with that person. And so you, you just got to give it your all and stuff. And I feel like there's no trust in relationships because they've been messed up so many times before. They don't they don't go into a relationship looking forward to it, so they just end up being heartbroken over and over again. For the longest time, I went through that, just you know, going from girl to girl to girl to girl because I thought in my head that it was them when it was me because I wasn't able to realize that I just need to take a minute and just be like, all right, what am I going to do? to make myself happy relationship-wise. A lot of people jump into relationships like, oh, she's cute, I want to date her. And then they don't think about like, oh, let me get to know her. What does she want to do when she grow up? What college does she want to go to? What does she want to study? And, you know, I don't know. A lot of people view relationships differently than I do. But I feel like I have a lot to say on that because I've just been through so much. I know, I know that I'm young, but I also, I'm very informed on it. I've been through heartbreak. I've been through depression. I've been through like... I know what it feels like to be down there, so I really want to get a message out there that you're not alone, you know? There's people that go through it as well, and you don't have to be sad. You're not alone. You know what I mean? 
And Bad Intentions, Purple Fantasies, all of those. Yeah, I was going to say, Bad Intentions really speaks to a lot of what you were just saying. Yeah. He says you love me, but you don't eat a lie to me. Yo, these promises you broke, it weren't nice to me. Talking about a love that never happened. And now I'm on my back, like what's happening? Now you hit me up through the messages, but you have bad intentions. Love that you keep messing with my senses. I gave into my heart, no, it's a mess. And I should've never tried to make things happen. I should've never tried to make things happen. Now you hit me up, overreacting. Like why you playing games? Like why you acting? Yeah, it's been a long time I feel passive, intoxicated with your bad intentions. It's been a long time I feel passive, intoxicated with your bad intentions. That's probably one of my favorite songs from you. Thank I featured you. Featured that in my uh, Japan vlog. If you haven't seen my Japan vlog, go check that out. Um, that's like, so who who's the producer for that? Kiwi, you said. Oh my god, Kiwi. I'm trying to understand who that is. I've never heard of him. Kiwi is such a dope guy. I mean, I don't know him. I like know him. I found him on YouTube. Yeah. Like, and um, the first beat I used from him was, uh, I have a lot of songs that I don't have recorded written to his beats, but Bad Intentions was recorded by Kiwi. Kiwi is like, I don't know much about him. All I know is that he's a YouTuber that makes beats, honestly. Okay. He he's doesn't... he's not from Springfield, though. Gotcha. I gotcha. just know that he makes... He's, like, the only... It's so weird because I look up A-Boogie-type beats or Melody-type beats and stuff like that. And Kiwi is the only producer I always fall back into, like, he's got, writing. He's got it's like, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go on to, like, <laughs> anybody else's record. Oh, I understood that. Wow. <laughs> I caught it late myself. I, um... It's like, I don't know, I'll look up, I'll look up a boogie beat, and I'll click a beat by Stunner Beats, right? And I'll go through, like, five of their beats, and I'll go to Mubs type beats, and I'll go through, like, five of their beats. And I always, always end up falling back into a beat that I like that ends up just being by Kiwi. Like, he just has, like, a talent, and he just ha- when I When I, like, get more up, I want to eventually meet him. Like, he's really talented. Yeah, to he's lock dope. in and have that relationship for him to know yeah, your voice and make a beat his for beats, you. His beats, his beats match my aesthetic so well. The thing, like, I don't know, like, I like the melodies he implements in his beats and stuff. It's just something I've never seen before with other producers. That's why I like him so much. And he's, like, really cool and humble. Like, I go through the comments and he's always liking comments, replying, letting people know, informing people. He's, like, cool. Sweet. Okay, so... Shout out to Kiwi. Shout definitely. out Kiwi. Um, so the other song I wanted to talk about is called Side Hoes. <laughs> uh, also, also a lot to do with relationships. So I guess what I want to talk about, based on what you said, is do you think, I mean, social media is here to stay, right? Do you think this kind of long-term relationship situation that existed for the back end of humanity is something that's attainable still? Or do you think it's kind of been ruined permanently? Social media isn't the problem. The problem is the people behind those screens. A lot of people, you know, like, you, you're you going to get the energy you give, you know? If you're on social media being like, oh, fuck Jessica, she, she, she's a bitch, whatever, la la la, you're going to get the energy back, you know? Like, you're mad, you're petty, and you're just posting that on social media. You don't have to post it on social media. Social media doesn't care. Like, I don't know. Like, social media has the ability to change the world, and people use it to just play around. Um, But what's it called? Side Hose, that song. When I recorded that song, I thought it was so good. I was, like, so, like, by it. Yeah. Actually, I when you we, – we had this car ride – back from Greenfield where you played me a lot of your music and I was like just off rip I was like man this is so good and what I like to do is like I'll listen to like a poppin song that I think is really good and then I go listen to like a local artist right after to make sure like okay is this taking me to the same level oh yeah and and you definitely do so I'm just like damn this is this is real I have so many songs in my notes that I want, that are so good. This isn't even, like, I look at my music, this is how I treat my music. If I think a song is bad, then I'll say it's bad. If it's good, then I'll say it good. If it has potential, then I'll say it has potential. The music that I have written here is music that I've been writing for months. Music that I have gone back, changed lyrics, like, they're so good. I have a song called um, You're Mine, and it's about, um, it's about my girlfriend. And it's just basically talking about, like, how much she means to me, because I've been with her for a while. 
and it's just just talking. It's like it's like the hook, the verse of it is like you're mine, and I can take my eyes off you. Sometimes I don't know. Is it, I have bad memory, so I could read it for you if you want. Yeah, try and pull it up. Um, yeah. Let's go back to um, side hoes though. How did oh that yes, sound? oh my. That song is about my ex. Right. And I was I was kind of being petty on it because I was like, you're just a side ho, side ho. Put you on a side note. Because it's like, you know, you go into relationships. Like, I went into that relationship thinking like, yo, she's good looking. She's nice. She's cool. Man, she's the one. So what was the rude awakening? or The, the rude what, awakening what was... It's young love. You're young. You don't know what you're doing. So she didn't know what she was doing. I was I was insecure. You know, my first I've relationships that I can say that I remember that I acknowledge are my last four relationships. This is the first one out of the four. That relationship I was very insecure. I didn't know what I really wanted when it came to a girl. I was just in it for the sole purpose of just tasting love. And with that relationship it, it started off good, but what started to really, like, change was, you know, we started going like this, and we were trying so hard to go like this, and it wasn't just, it wasn't working. She was going through her own things, I was going through my own things, and it just, it wasn't working out. Then she was, like, suicidal. Like, I don't want to speak too much on it, but she was going through a lot of things, and I couldn't really help her the way that she needed to be helped, so it just ended up not working. And then sh- we started to not communicate as much, and we started to argue, and then ultimately we just fell apart. And I was mad about it because since I couldn't help her the way that I wanted to, I felt like it was my fault. So I wrote the song like, "You said you want to be with me," and I don't like so much full family. I don't know. It was like I was really I was sad, but I was angry. I was frustrated. There's a lot of emotions put into that song. Like part of me is saying "fuck you," but part of me is like, "Do I really mean to fuck you?" You know what I mean? Right, just being confused. And I think that's that's a big part of young love is like n- like a small fraction of people ultimately end up being with like the girl that they're in their first relationship with. Yes, and I so see that a lot. And so you just have to take those learnings and um, kind of become a better judge of other people and yourself. So... Um, I also want to talk about no trust because a lot of what you've said to me does kind of speak to trust issues. And you talked about your mom and how things kind of that that's where the the first major non trust happened. Yeah. I think I want to talk more about how you how that how that song what you meant to put across with that song, but then how you are healing from that and dealing with it. That song, I'm not going to lie to you, I freaking hated that song. Like, I wasn't going to put it out. I put a poll on my thing on Instagram. I was like, should I drop this? Allah. And a lot of people said to drop it, and I was just like, okay. And Pasto, he stood up, he's like, um, why are you saying that? Because like, I put, should I drop? Don't know if I should drop it, in parentheses. And he's like, why are you saying that? You should just drop it. It sounds good. Because it's like the style of the song, it's very like, it's not, it's something that, like I got out of my comfort zone to record that song. Mm -hmm. The style, like the flow, everything was just so different. It wasn't my usual like style, so I kind of felt like I wasn't pulling it off. That's why I was kind of hesitant to um, put it out, but I put it out and it's, it's doing pretty decent and stuff. But the song is just like, you know, I can't trust nobody. I can't trust nobody, you know. Still talking to Shorty, even though we finished. Like you, that that line stuck out to me. I was gonna mention that line if you didn't. That, it's like that. That's kinda like the relationship's over, but the communication's still going on. Exactly. You're not really sure why, but you don't no know why. But you're on. in love. You're dumbfounded. You're in love. You don't know. You know. It's that song, man. I was just talking about like. I was. I wrote that song because it was like, in my past experiences, I have talked to females and. It starts off good. You know, you think everything is going good, but... And then it comes a point where you start to argue, and then you both know, subconsciously, you're like, this isn't going to work out. But you're like, I'm going to keep trying. You just keep you keep trying, and, you know, still talk to Shorty when, when you're finished. Like, it's not going to work, and you just got to be like, all right, you know, I just got to... We got to stop this. We got to grow. Because, you know, keep trying to communicate when you know it's not going to work. It's just toxic. 
But that that song right there is like, you know, talking about how I feel like, I feel like the victim kind of, you know, because it's like I'm a genuine person. When I jump into relationships, I I make sure that I jump in being ready. You know, I'm giving my if I'm dating you, I'm giving my all into you. You know, not to sound cliche, I'm giving really my all to you, my attention, my recognition. I'm acknowledging you as my girlfriend, my equal, my everything. I'm not like I expect you to do the same. And I feel like no trust speaks kind of like about how sometimes I feel like I don't get that all the time. You know? Like I could I was like I gave I gave my all into a girl. I gave my everything into a girl and then I just ended up with frowns. I ended up still being heartbroken. And it made me feel a lot worse cuz it was like like damn like I gave my all into you. I gave you everything that I could give you, that I could offer. I tried treating you like the woman, like the girlfriend, like the queen you deserve to be treated, and I still couldn't do it. I still couldn't make you, ha- make you happy. I still ended up being sad. Like, I was just going through a lot of emotions when writing that song, and, you know, I put it out, and, you know, it's still up and stuff, but, um, yeah, the song's just basically talking about stuff like that. Got you. I, I think it turned out great, and I do agree Thank that it, it stands out from your other songs uh, in terms of, like, technically what you were doing with it, but I would say you pulled it off, actually. Thank you. Um, so I kind of want to talk more about this. I mean, you called it at the beginning of the interview. You're the Johnny of all trades. So why? what got you into these other things, like editing, recording, acting? What got you into that? Oh, my God. I'm like, okay. Honestly, photography, I started off liking rap as like, it was like a joke thing, but what really I wanted to pursue was photography. That was your main. That was like the thing where I was like, I, I'm going to be a photographer. I'm pulling it off. Like, I'm doing it. It started off, you know, you know, obviously on my phone, you know, here and there. But like, I feel like my love for the things I love is just, it's like I want to have a backup plan. I'm not in school. I dropped out, so I already cut one of my legs off. That means I'm going to have to try double to pursue the things I want to do. Oh, yeah. So it's just like, um, if I can't do rap, I'm producing. If I can't produce, I'm acting. If I can't act, I'm doing photography. If I don't do photography, I'm doing graphic design. If that doesn't work out, I got like five other things I could do. Just having a, you have to be very versatile because the industry that I'm trying to be in, the environment that I'm trying to be in, there are a lot of people who are trying that take advantage of you. A lot of people that can steal your money. You have to be smart. You have to be vigilant. You have to be. And I think what else you're talking about is being self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. When you don't need other people, it's a lot easier not to make a bad decision. Keeping your circle small is, I mean, in my opinion, the best thing you could do, because you can't you can't play yourself. You're you. You you know. You know what's best for you, your gut feeling. You know, you got to trust your gut feeling. No matter how many people tell you you can't do it, if you genuinely feel, you know, if John feels that John can do it, then John can do it because you he can't tell me what I can't do. You know what I mean? So, like, I just think that a lot of people tell me, like, yo, John, bro, like, you dropped out for this, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, you, 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 you're going to have to move out soon. I'm like, yeah, but... Um, I believe in my, my potential, and that's not because, you know, I'm coming off as, like, a cocky conceit. It's just, like, I feel like I have the ability to be who I want to be. I've, you know, I don't have, I don't promote my stuff. I just put it on my story, send it to my friends, and it's gotten me to where I'm at now. Imagine so with the experience, so the intelligence, the stuff like that. Now, I'm going back to school. I want to go back to school. I just dropped out to have more time, and I kind of, dropping out was... You know, I had to drop out because I had some personal stuff going on with a girl and, you know, kids and stuff. So it was just like, had to drop out to start to, you know, focus on that for a little bit. And, you know, it's just, I never was a school person. So me staying in school would just me be ending up, ending up wasting helpful. my time. I'd rather go the alternative route, get a, get my high set, get my associates, than waste four years of my life in high school doing nothing, getting a certificate of achievement. You know, so I just wanted to take, I took, it was a risky decision because dropping out, things could go wrong anyway. Sure. So, you know, I, ha- I had to drop out and get my GED. Well, I'm, I think I support it if you know that it was for you. And I think a lot of people inside this music industry 
I'm noticing they started early. And that's kind of one of my biggest regrets is I kind of started late. You know, I was almost in my mid-20s before I started doing anything with uh, inside of the music industry. So, you know, starting early is super important. And so now if you do the work and do the focus, you know, you'll be all set by the time you're my age. I've been doing music. I've been doing every. I've been pursuing everything that I've been pursuing for years. Like right, years. And that's that experience. So and think when you're ten years in. Drake has that line. Been in for ten, but I feel like a rookie. By the time you're ten years in, you'll still be a young person, and then you'll just be able to hit all your marks that much easier because you have that experience. So when I was when I was um fourteen, that was me not knowing what I wanted to do. You know, no lies. When I was 15, that was me not knowing what I wanted to do. When I was 16, that was me situating myself, you know, me, you know, finally realizing what I wanted to do, how I wanted to pursue them, how I wanted to go about it. 17, when I'm 17, which is going to be next, you know, March, when I'm 17, that's going to be me pursuing everything that I need to do. I know what I want to do. I know what I need to do. I know what, what I need. Like, I have everything planned out in my head, Um, you know. Where I feel like if everything goes according to plan, if everything goes how I'm thinking it's going to go, I should be um, established completely by the time I'm 18, which is going to be in a year. Like, because it's like consistency. That's what it really is. I've been consistent for years. I've been doing this. Growth is showing. And even though it might not be visible with the followers and stuff, you know, you look at my insights and numbers are there. Like, at one point, I had, like, 30,000 profile views in, like, a week. 30,000. Bad Intentions, that post got 4,000 play, uh, 4,000 views, 300 likes, I think, it got. My views are just going up. My um, audience is growing. My producing page has over 10,000 views. My first EP has over 10,000 streams. Like, I'm growing. And, like, I can see the progress. So all I really got to do now is just get all of it, um manifest it and grow it you know like just control it sure are we getting an album anytime soon oh that's kind of what it feels like i am trying so hard to um i'm trying to okay so i do different styles of music the music that everybody's listening to is like my emotional you know love stuff like that like the r&b type of music but i'm so versatile i have music that's you know um you know comethazine Yes. I have music like that. I have music like A Boogie. I have music like Scarlord and like Screamo. Like I got a lot of different music like styles that I have I feel like I have perfected in my own way. Um I wanna drop an R and B album, a rap album. Like something raw, like rap. Kind of like, like a double like, album. Like Bowser type of vibe, you know, like yes. gritty. Like I have like I have music like that too. Um an album, I think if I ever drop an album, my next album will probably be like um, R&B because, you know, I just, that's what I'm like, that's what that's I'm. That's what people know you for. That's, that's what, what people, I, people know me for, for and that's you. what I'm connecting with the most right now. I'm not connecting with my my rap rap, boom bap, you know, gritty John right now. I'm, right now, I want to do my singing. That's what I want to pursue right now. And I feel like I'm in a good place where I could do that. Like I have the right audience to do it the right way. For sure. And you it's can like, just take your time with it. You can make sure it's you know, right, like a good track list with all good songs, and take the full like year to make sure everything's just right. Like you said, you're very picky. The and then boom. The people like listening to music like bad intentions, they like the R and B. So if I drop a song like Kamethazine, they're gonna be like what is it's this? It's gonna be weird, right? Exactly. It's so gonna, you know, it's gonna slow transition. Up, so like, let yourself grow. Exactly. I'm, my brain Go works. One direction before you branch yeah, out. Yeah, my my brain works weird. It's like I know what to do. I know everything that I need to do. Like my brain has everything in folders. You know, right now I'm just going through the folders, situating them. You know, and then soon I'm gonna just take the folder out, just execute it, and it's like let it go. I can't stress how like. I can't stress how important it is that um, people realize this. They need to realize, like, they if you have a dream that um, you want to, like, pursue, pursue it. Hesitating on it is the worst thing you could do because for so long I hesitated on um, a lot of things, and I'm pursuing them now, and it's kind of harder for me. And I'm, even if I'm still young, like, things that I could have done 
and could have profited right, off been now. Farther down the path. Exactly. If you want, if you have something you want to do, then do it. As long as you feel comfortable and confident about it, like do it. If if you like making robots and you make robots at home with like stuff, like homemade stuff, and you're making them good, imagine if you had the resources, if you had a lab to actually make stuff. You just need to just you know believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. Is what you're talking it's cliche. About. It's cliche, but it's true. But it's true. I want to talk about the larger um, Western mass music scene. Um, I want to start with what you like about it, and I, then I want to go into what you think needs to improve for that. What I like the most about Western Mass is the love. Well, you know, there's a lot of fake love, but if you're in the right place, you can find a lot of support. Like, for example, with Dub C, you know, I, there was a time where I didn't even know Dub C existed. There was a time where I didn't even know Filth Town existed. I thought, I like it. Like I really thought, like you thought you're the only rapper. Yeah, because it was at a, like no one was like they're so low key about it. Yeah, everybody's like in their own specific like place. So I'm like, you know, why he's rapping, cool. And then I met Gene, which is one of uh, Dub C's. I don't know if they're Dub C's photographers, but they've worked in the past. And I'm like, yeah, they they do this and do that. I was like, cool. I met Pasto in a place where I was trying to apply for. He was there with some friends, and I was like, cool, it was good. He raps. I was like, dope. This is like to like way before like the you know right like, this is like when he w- was dropping before like, team 10 oh my god that was like he wasn't even going by pasto chris he was like l- something else low pasto or something not low pasto that's dumb um he was going by something else but um he he changed his, his username was different he had less followers like this is like just starting pasto right and at that time i was like confused kid john like, even <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, you're a rapper, dude. Me too. Listen to my song. So it was, it was, you know, pretty dope. But like, what I like a lot is, I feel like every Springfield rapper, not every, but like most of them, they they want to help each other build. I've noticed that with Dub C, for example, I've shown them my music and they've been like, oh, this is dope. You know, I recommend you do this. They give me pointers. They help me. They give me advice, which is really cool because like that, we're both building. We're both growing together. That's um something that I really appreciate about Springfield and Massachusetts in general is that we're all trying to make it out. And instead of being selfish, we're helping each other make it out, if that makes sense. For sure. So how about something that needs to improve? Authenticity. There's a lot of rappers that... that just sound like other people? Yes, but it's not only that. It's... They're, you know, there's a lot of rappers, or not even rappers, like, there's just uh, people pursuing things here. Like, they're not authentic. They'll present themselves a the type of way to you, act the type of way, but to only take advantage. It's like they obtain what they want and they leave. I was just arguing with somebody a couple, like, yesterday, the day before yesterday, because I was shooting his interviews, I was um, filming his music videos, I had... I was doing so much for him that I could have charged him for. I could have, like, easily said no. Like, there have been times where I have put aside my personal projects to help him. And I re- like I realized how fake he was, and I didn't like it. And it was just like, you know, damn, like, you know, not to sound like a, a bitch or whatever, like, but you, would, you wouldn't be where you're at if it, if it wasn't for me helping you. You know, his music video got, like, 300 views, another one, like, you know, I on cold days, just me recording, like, and then he was like, oh, you didn't have to. I was, I was like, it's not even about that. It's just the respect. He was disrespecting me. He was going doing things behind my back, saying things behind my back, talking about me. He was saying, like, oh, fuck Johnny, Allah. And then when I would see him, he would be like, oh, it's good, bro. So it was just like, I was like, you know, the authenticity isn't there. I feel like. Artist needs, I feel like there needs to be more humble, like humbleness, I guess. People need to humble themselves and just be real. Definitely, definitely. Because at the end of the day, everyone has a lot farther to go. Yeah. You um, know. So my last question to you is going to be the new rules of music marketing. Because I went to school for business. I went to, I did uh, marketing at UMass. I want to know what you've seen in marketing work for somebody else or for you that you think uh, other people should try that are watching this today? I mean, you know, you could do the easy thing and do dumb things to get clout. or But, like, at the end, it's really hard. It, I mean, something that has worked for me, 
that has gotten me to where I'm at is communication. Just hitting the person up, being like, yo, what's good? I'm John, 16, I do music, let's work. Martin's, like, doesn't you don't have to pay for promotion. A lot of people get it confused. They think that if you drop like $1,000 on promotion, you're going to be go. faint. Yeah. yeah, you have to, you can drop that $1,000, but you have to know when to drop it. Like, the little things matter. Like, literally, the time you, if you're in Springfield, if you tr- if you pay a thousand dollars for promo like ten o'clock at night, you're not gonna get the same amount as you would if you dropped it like right now two in the afternoon, three in the afternoon because most of them are asleep. The thousand dollars are being wasted; they're all sleeping. Like you have to think about it from that point as well. What time you drop it? Where you drop it? Who are you directing it to? Do you want it? Do you want you know a thousand dollars to go to a broad audience? You know, have a lot of people from everywhere. You know, hear your stuff, or do you or want do you a want lot of people in the neighborhood to exactly. know? Exactly, you know what you. I mean. You gotta think about things like that. You gotta be very strategic. You gotta. Be so, do you have a story for yourself where you thought you did well in that capacity? Well, the bad intentions post. That post yeah. where I posted the preview, I sent it to all of my friends. I told all my friends to send it to their friends, right? And then I told them to post it on their stories. I posted it on all stories. Literally a thousand dollar promo. What that basically is is, I mean, like. A thousand dollars promo is basically Instagram doing all that for you. You can do that for free. Yes. If I push wow, my Wow, such a good point. You know what I mean? For such a young person. Right. You can go and get if the people, equivalent amount of views if you put if you have hours and hours if you put to the start effort, messaging people. But people, people, people I'm not gonna say people are lazy because I've done this before. But people Well people are lazy. And, yeah, they, like, and it's so easy to throw a little bit of money at it and see that response that you want. But it's never the same though. Isn't you building organically that. even better? This person hit me up with their music. Like, how much more likely are you to how, engage how much, with that? Want to share it? Then, oh, I got this ad. Scroll. Exactly. How much are? Would you rather click a random like? Would, I would rather like if somebody was doing that. Like, I would rather have them be like, "Hey, John, check out my music." I would check it out. But if you just if I'm scrolling through Instagram, seeing, I'm I might be interested, but it's never the same feeling because. You have to think about it. If I push my music to you, you're pushing it to other people. You're, it's a relatable audience. If you're paying Instagram to promote your post, they're promoting it to other Instagrammers. You know, they probably won't be as interested in music as the people around you because they're they're randoms. You know, <laughs> like what you could do. Key. key. What you you have to you have to really 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 be smart. You know, you're paying a thousand dollars to promote your post, but to who do you want to promote it to? Like you got, you gotta think about the times. Like you just gotta really think about anything, cause you can make one wrong step, and that thousand dollars can go. Yeah, it's gonna cost you. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I think that's a great place to leave it. Yes. Temple, thank you very much for coming through. It was a pleasure. I appreciate that organized sound podcast. You just heard from Temple. We're gonna, yep. I'm gonna include all his music all throughout this interview, so you've probably thank heard you, a bunch you. of it. Where's the best place for them to listen to it? Um. So I'm trying to get more streams, so probably SoundCloud. Hit up SoundCloud. I'm, I'm on gonna link that below. Um, SoundCloud, BandLab, and YouTube. But I will be on all platforms very soon. Um, my next EP, Chapter 16, that album is definitely going to be on all platforms um, in the next and couple of months. And spell it out one more time because it's that different spelling. Temple? T-X-M-P-L-E. A lot of people ask me, like, why I have an X there. I just, I don't know, like, I have OCD. And, like, when I spell it T-E-M-P-L-E, I feel like it's weird. So I put an X because, you know, X's are cool. <laughs> I don't know, like. That's, it works. It's it works. perfect. Let's go. And when, you, when you look at it, people, like, you have to look twice to realize it's the X. So I don't know. It catches people's attention. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Appreciate it, man. We're signing out. That was really good.